a lot of folks down my way, down in Fairfield County, have been hot on this topic for quite some time. And it, it came to my attention a couple of years ago, uh, first through constituents, but secondly, personally, because I have uh, three boys, three children, uh, ranging from 16 down to 7, uh, two of whom have serious food allergies. And we started doing some uh, research into the topic years back, and no one's quite sure where these food allergies are coming from. Why are they, why are they on the uptick of the last 10, 15 years? Why has the uh, scope and the breadth of uh, the types of food allergies increased? And that's when I kind of stumbled on this GMO discussion and theory. Um, so I've been, you know, kind of following it as a member of the Environment Committee. With Representative Roy brought it up. Uh, it was the tip of the spear, I think, the last session on it. Uh, I, I listened with great interest. The the, um, uh, the bill that came up, I, I think, was a good effort, but it did have some flaws in it for some of the reasons you mentioned. So I think this is a good opportunity to kind of take another run at it and kind of fix some of the issues. Um, and I see the issues really as being threefold. First, before we even draft a bill, I, I'd like us to be able to um, be confident that the science behind our rationale is there. And I, th I think there's, there's a ton of anecdotal evidence. There's a ton of good science behind it. Uh, but I, I think we need to do a better job of marshalling it and, and, uh, and focusing it. But, and I think the information's there. Regardless, I mean, this isn't a, a ban. This is a labeling issue. So, so the level of burden of proof, so to speak, I think it, it doesn't need to raise the level of a, of a, a ban. Uh, but the meaningful labeling is really the, the, the issue that tripped me up um, last time around when we were doing this last session. Because it just, and, and, I, and I had this conversation with a lot of young mothers too, and obviously my wife, a mother of the boys uh, who I mentioned, you know, saying something might contain a GMO is good, and I think that's helpful, but what I, the feedback that I got uh, and triggered some thoughts in my head, some more meaningful labeling, a couple of different flavors, like it might contain might contain a GMO, and then you have two or three flavors or categories of GMO, whether it's in an interspecies GMO or a, or a yield amplification GMO or a you know, pesticide-resistant GMO, something, or just high-fructose corn syrup. And that was really, you know, and that was really the, the issue, I think, that people were saying, well, it might contain a GMO, anything that has high-fructose high fructose corn syrup, which, unfortunately, is darn near everything these days. Um, you know, the labeling kind of gets watered down because it's going to be in everything. So I'd like to see if there's an ability to create a, you know, certain shades, a, a, a short spectrum of labeling that might actually give some people some good information. Um, and lastly, my concern, and, and Phil mentioned this, is that no matter what we do here today as the state of Connecticut, uh, a labeling ban on GMOs will be subject to challenge, uh, both from federal preemption issues with the Food and Drug Act, uh, or just basic uh, dormant commerce clause preemption issues in general, um, and you know maybe that's okay, maybe that's okay because a lot of times change happens, change should happen in this country from the bottom up, and not that the states are the bottom, but you know what I mean. Um, and if a couple other states follow suit, that's uh, whether something happens at the federal government or in the marketplace, I think that's a positive step. So thank you for uh, convening this task force, and uh, thank you for allowing me to add my two cents.